Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Coins, and today I'm reviewing Almanac the Crystal Peaks from Colossal Games. Now, this review is going to be a little different and probably shorter than normal, primarily because I already, re I already reviewed Almanac the Dragon Road, which is basically the same game. I mean, there's a reason to own this, we'll talk about that, but they're basically the same game, and to that end, if you want a fully more detailed, comprehensive thoughts on this game, just check out that video. I'll link to it down below. But with that said, uh, very briefly, what is the Almanac the Crystal Peaks? The Almanac the Crystal Peaks is a worker placement flipbook. You heard me right, it's a worker placement flipbook. In the game, you're going to start on the first page over here, and every page is going to have its own rules as far as how you place workers. Now, before we dive too much into it, the general idea is you are merchants, you're going to be wandering around, you're going to be collecting goods, selling those goods for money, trying to find other ways to make money as well throughout the course of the adventure. Money is going to convert into points, but there are other ways to get points as well. That's the high level overview. To that end, on this first page over here, the rules are pretty simple. Over here on this page, you can place your worker in any one of these spots. So here's a spot, here's a spot, here's a spot, here's a spot. These are all, any section is divided by lines to the spot. But from there, you can only go into spots connected by paths. So for example, my first worker can be here. But then after I've gone into this hut, I can't go here directly because I have to now start connecting via paths. That's the worker placement puzzle on this page. So you're going to place your worker. Maybe you go ahead and take some goods. Maybe you go ahead and go to a spot where you can then sell some goods. Maybe you're going to fulfill contracts or get contracts. Maybe you're going to go ahead and get a new caravan spot for your wagon where you can go ahead and add spots where you can now store more goods in your wagon as you go. So you have different opportunities as far as what you can be trying to do on this page, but primarily it's going to be expanding your caravan, adding new, uh, getting more goods, or taking specific actions related to the page that are on there. This is going to be the, the primary idea, the core, uh, the core idea of what you're doing. When you're done placing workers on this page, and again, as you, as you do different things, you can earn more workers by buying more caravan spots. So these are going to give you a few things. They're going to give you points, they're going to give you workers, they're going to give you potentially extra shields, which are going to be relevant for certain encounters that are going to measure and count your shields against certain enemies. And when you're done working on this page, you're going to vote on who is the team leader by paying money, by flipping over your hand, turning over, seeing who bid the most in order to be the caravan leader, and that person's going to choose where you go to and also be able to possibly have an interaction on this card. Very often, the cards are going to give the leader a choice or resolve from the leader starting downwards, either measuring your strength, having an impact, things like that. These cards, there's a whole bunch of them in the game, so you'll have different encounters every single time as you go from page to page, but then, this is the fun part of the game, when you go from page two, when you go from page one, you are either going to page two or three. It's going to show you a small example of what's going on thematically, but also which goods are the most valuable. So if I have a bunch of red goods that I've collected on this page, maybe I want to go to Flow Lake. So let's go ahead and go to page two, Flow Lake, where red goods are more powerful. And now again, we continue the process with a slightly different worker placement puzzle. Same core idea. You're still going to have spots where you can sell goods, still going to have spots where you can collect goods, still going to have custom spots related to the area you're in, buying more caravans, visiting the store, which has a few uh, catch-all out options, more contracts, things like that, and then every page has its own rules adjustment as far as how it operates, what that page does. In this case, you have flows traveling around the board over here, which will have little tokens. There's a whole box full of tokens that'll give you different things and ways to interact with, and that's the game. You're going to go on six different adventures: the starting page, four pages in the middle, and then the final page. But those six different adventures follow a sprawling path going from any number of different pages to different pages such that there are only six you'll play in a single game, but there are going to be 19 different possible adventures you can play throughout the course of your journey. So 19 possible adventures, branching pathways as far as how you explore and navigate from one page to the next, each giving you, again, the same core puzzle, collecting, selling goods, all that stuff, different ways to get points, but ultimately small differences and variations along the way as far as how you interact with the page, and that is how you play Almanax the Crystal Peaks. I already reviewed Almanax the Dragon Road, and the differences between the two games are well, 18, I don't know the exact number, but again, it's another book full of, I think, if I recall correctly, it's 16 different worker placement puzzles in that one. It might have been more, I don't remember, but the general idea is the same. You have a branching journey, you have all of that. The main differences here, the only real things to cover here are, well, let's see about this. The only real differences between this and Almanac the Dragon Road are obviously the differences in the puzzles, the fact that you have new puzzles, the possibility to integrate, and then the conversation of is it worth owning one, the other, is anyone better, or something like that. And to that end, if you're looking for my opinion of Almanac the Dragon Roads and Almanac the Crystal Peaks, I recommend watching my video on Almanac the Dragon Road. I'll sum up my opinion as being the game is charming, 
It is a very light game as far as the worker placement puzzle. It is not the heaviest game I've played, not by a long shot. This is a lighter worker placement game for better or for worse, but the game itself has a lot of charm as you go through the journey. The thing that makes this game compelling is that every different page is a slight variation of the puzzle. So if you're looking for the best worker placement game, this is not it, uh, far from it in my opinion. But if you're looking for a game that keeps you invested and involved along the way and gives you plenty of reasons to dive back in because you can play this game seven, eight times and still find a page that you've never actually explored before, if you're looking for that sense of journey and discovery, then this game has a lot of charm. I gave Almanac the Dragon Road a four out of five, and I'm similarly going to give Almanac the Crystal Peak a four out of five as well. It has all the highs and all the lows. It has a simple, accessible gameplay, very easy to dive into, rule books very short, uh, a lot of fun to go through the journey, with the main caveat is that it is a lighter experience. If you're looking for a meatier, tighter experience with a lot more thinkiness to it, this is not that game. But if you're looking for a fun worker placement game that has a lot of variety to the way you engage with it, then I do recommend strongly both of these games. The things I'm going to talk about more today are going to be, one, do I recommend one versus the other? Minimally, maybe Almanac the Crystal Peaks. Minimally. And it's a very minimal thing, because I kind of have two... I have a pro and con feature. I believe Almanac's The Crystal Peaks comes with more pages to go through. From that sense, it's going to give you more. And just more is theoretically better. It gives you an additional endgame page to go through as well. One of the downsides of the game is you always start on the same first page, and you always end on the same end pages. So there's less variety to the beginning and the end, more variety to the middle. Now, Almanac's The Crystal Peaks gives you another endgame page compared to Dragon Road, so slightly less of a, hey, I'm going to end in two spots, rather you're going to end in three spots, that's slightly better. It's a small thing. I think it'd be better if it gave you more starting spots too. That would be even more fun. So you could have different starting spots as you go through it. But again, small differences there. I think Omnath the Dragon Road arguably is a drop more creative. I think the first time round, the creation of those pages gives you a little more kind of just freedom versus now, once you start diving into the next 19 maps, you have to start trying to think even further outside of the box, which means it ends up being a drop more convoluted. So I think Almanac the Crystal Peaks gives you a drop more and Almanac the Dragon Road gives you a drop a drop more direct and a drop more complex. Like there are one or two maps in Crystal Peaks that I felt were unnecessarily complicated as, as opposed to being just different for the sake of being different and fun. It felt almost different and complicated. So small pro and con in each direction, a very minimal leaning towards one or the other. Again, maybe the Crystal Peaks, maybe, but I'm really not certain as far as preference. I would say either one is a safe choice. As far as integrating the two, because there is a way to integrate the two books so you can go from one journey to the next, uh, back and forth between the two books, I, I think that's completely unnecessary. I mean, you can do it if you want to, by all means, but I, I even owning both of these, I don't think I'm ever going to do that again. I don't think I'm ever going to bother going through the back and forth. And basically, you're going to have two books set up and then be flipping back and forth between one versus the other. Unless there's a reason you're looking for that specific experience, it didn't add anything to my experience. It just adds more table manipulation and management to the game, which isn't something that improved my experience. But hey, I mean, you get to go from map to map, so... Again, if you're playing this game enough, if you're playing this game a ton, maybe that variety to the way you engage alternating book to book, maybe that's something you're looking for, and it might be good for you. For me, I can't see myself ever doing it again, so I wouldn't strongly recommend it, but again, if you're playing this game a lot, maybe that's a, a fit for you. That's basically the review. It's, it's a four to five for me, just like the original Dragon's Road, uh, more held up by the charm and journey than the mechanics alone. Mechanics alone would probably be a 3.5, possibly even a three. If I was looking, I mean, forget that. If I was looking at a single page, if you were playing Almanac the Crystal Peaks or Almanac the Dragon Road as a single page where you were on that one page for the entire journey, at best, this game would be a three out of five. Mechanically speaking, this game is on the lighter side. But the journey holds you through it. The journey gives you more sense of exploration, a sense of journey, and a sense of variety to the experience. And those things elevate this game such that it is so much fun to go through what page are you going to explore next? How are you going to interact with that page? What's the carryover going to be like from what you've done on the, that page prior to the page you're up to now? And then going through that final end game as well. I think they're both excellent games. Highly recommend them both. Uh, good in terms of uh, intro to worker placement, if you're looking for something like that. If you're looking for a lighter entry to worker placement, I think these games are great. And if you're looking for something that has charm that will hold over even the seasoned gamer, I believe these games will hold up to that as well. If you're looking for other game recommendations, well, Almanac the Dragon Road. And if you're looking for something that is another entry level but engaging worker placement game, Lords of Waterdeep is going to be another excellent one that I highly recommend. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.